Damn, son, where'd you find this?
listening to Police Alive on KEXP, the newest record called Madness. You're listening to Police Alive on KEXB.
Do we even love? 
Polisa live on KEXP. Oh, so gorgeous. That was amazing. My heart is so filled right now. Oh, good. It's really good to be back and see you. It's really great to have you here. I can't believe it's been 10 years since wow. your first record, Give You the Ghost, came out. And it's so great to still hear songs from that. I go back to that album regularly all the time. Oh, thank you. That means a lot. I'm just glad we got through that. We didn't, we didn't make any mistakes. No. <laughs> or, so that we're glaring. So thanks. Yeah. Smiles on my face. Yeah. Your music really does have this staying power. And as I said, I go back to it all the time. Shulamith, the last time you were here was with mm. the United Crushers, yeah. which absolutely love. I feel like I learned something new also with each new record. Mm. There's always something in there that I want to investigate and look into and learn more about. Of course, Shulamith Firestone was oh, sure. yep. the feminist, was new to me when you released mm -hmm. that record. And I'm always excited to see what you come up with each new album. And on this new one, I was kind of really enchanted that you created an entirely new tool mm -hmm. to help you produce this mm -hmm. record, something that Ryan and a fellow yeah. producer yeah. actually created. Can, for someone who's not um, a musician themselves, can yeah. you explain, tell me what it's called and explain what it is and how mm -hmm. it contributed to making this beautiful record? Yeah, it's called All Overs. It's a production tool that was started um, as a vision that Ryan had. And um, Ryan, not being a coder, but a producer and a musician, teamed up with his friend, Seth Rossetter, who is also a musician. Um, and they actually had a... Um, residency at Mass Mocha, which is a really awesome art space in Massachusetts. And so they got to spend time developing this tool that will basically take sounds, um, you know, live sounds, let's say people walking in the museum, washing their hands, talking in conversation, and it will take those conversations, those sounds, and turn them into a, a BPM, which is, you know, the beat of the song, the time signature, it will take it into a melody. You can choose a style of music all with the guise of trying to, you know, use AI as not a, a, a tool to, you know, make a whole song, but as another band member, as another instrument with which Ryan could then take little bits of interesting pieces um, that he found. For instance, there's a song on our record called Fountain, which is a conversation that Ryan recorded between our son, we have a son together, um, and him and our son Schwa talking, and then that was turned, was inputted into the all overs and turned into a melody line and a beat, and which I wrote over. And I wrote lyrics over too, and then the guys added their parts. And Ryan added, you know, as usual with Polisa, we have a lot of people from our community in Minneapolis and, a, and abroad um, adding into that. So it's it's a way to, much like the artwork on the record, it's a way to play with AI and see what is the sadness of a computer. And um, I'm not, um, what sounds does the computer learn from our like, sadness or our joy? Um, and it's very fascinating to me. Well, you call it a computer, but you've also said it's kind of like a band member and it has mm -hmm. been described as anthropomorphic. So mm -hmm. it seems like a really interesting tool. Was that something that, they created with Polisa in mind or just kind of their creative minds? Yeah, just kind of their creative minds. I mean, if you follow Ryan Olson's work, he's got like, he's working always on 10 different projects. So it's a, a production tool that, you know, some of our friends have even stolen from him and are using on their own music. Um, but um, in general, like, you know, it's a, a tool for the community and it's a tool for Ryan to like reinvestigate um, making music and this new tool, you know, I think... Polisa and a lot of our people in our community are interested in like, okay, how can we mess with stuff? How can we uh, mess with this new technology? How can we re-inspire ourselves? How can we be challenged? Um, and it is, it's a really interesting challenge to make a song over these melodies that are very, you know, inhuman or sort of like um, otherworldly and, um, um, you know, try to fit a song within this pattern that it's created and to collaborate with it um, instead of trying, you know, not necessarily trying to control it, but so. It is such a gorgeous record. And 
You've said that Madness is a musical and spiritual extension of your previous record. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, it is sort of, it is most similar to Give You the Ghost, I think. Um, And yet it draws on all the things that we've learned from the previous uh, four four or five records in that it's a little bit more mantra-based lyrically and kind of melody lines and kind of... um, Um, and so in that sense, it's also a little less realized. Um, there are in the sense that with the first record, it was so new to us, what we were doing, who we were. We didn't even really know each other very well in the band. Similarly with this record, we're sort of experimenting, um, with different tools it's also, you know, you mentioned that in previous records, I named them after like Shulamith or United Crushers is a graffiti crew and Minneapolis um, is kind of like this trying to like take attention away from the music. Um, when you're, when I was younger, it was like too much pressure to try to name it of something or describe our music of something like from us personally. It was always like, oh, well, like this is something I'm, I'm interested in right now that kind of relates to this record. This Madness kind of goes back to not being, um, just sort of letting the music be and the lyrics and the the relationship that all of us have. And it didn't, um, it wasn't called like, you know, some disease related to madness that you, someone had to research or anything. It was just, just madness. Um, similar, give you the ghost. It's just like, it's not as um, kind of angsty and trying to like hide or deal with, not knowing what was going on as far as like being a musician or I don't know if that makes sense, but. Well, you released a very striking statement along the album, the art looked the artwork that went along with madness. You said, I am here for you all. And I'm never truly myself here. I am her for you all. And I am never truly her as much as you feel like it. Can you explain what you mean by that? Um, I think when in today's um, climate, you know, there is this sort of idea um, that musicians or artists are sort of, you know, they have to, they are responsible to their audience. Um, when, in fact, I can feel myself like I'm going to kick myself later for saying this, but in fact, we do this more than ever now for very little in return from the audience. Um, I think musicians are, um, you know, most people don't, most people stream music. Um, So a lot of this is, you know, you're not really getting, you're not doing this for album sales anymore. You're not doing this um, for, you know, sold out shows. We don't play to sold out shows. Um, We're doing it because we really love it. You know, we, and I am here for the audience and we are here, but I'm also, um, you know, it's sort of like the AI art, like, you are told before you promote a record, like you need to take a lot of pictures of yourself. You need to do a lot of videos. And I think as you get older, it's just sort of like, "Mm, I'm, I'll give you a little bit, but no one needs that much of me or anyone. There's millions of musicians. Um, So it's like just this acceptance that like, you know, you, you can, I give everything and my lyrics are very descriptive, but also there's always something that is kind of just for me and um, it's um, sort of just, I wanted to go about putting out this record without having to like write a bio where we explained, you know, it feels like sometimes you have to be like, I was hit by a car before writing this record or uh, my house was flooded or there has to be some thing to grab people's attention. And I think we're getting a little more comfortable in just being like, hey, we all have other jobs. This is just something we really love to do take it or leave it, um, I, I, can't, uh, I, I can't really like sell it any more than I am. If you don't want it, you don't have to take it. Um, but I'm going to probably keep doing it. We love playing together. That is the long story. It means a lot of things, too, I think, about who I am as a person. I'm very open, but yet I'm always very mistrusting and cold and guarded at the same time. So it's just sort of we all have those dichotomies, those contradictions, um, and uh, 
Sorry, that was a long answer, but there you go. <laughs> well, I'll take it. Okay. And I'm glad that you want to continue to do okay. it and that it does bring you in the band joy. Yeah, thank you. I also have to say I was surprised and delighted to hear you mention that the music of John Carpenter, one of the masters of the horror film genre, is kind of an inspiration for you. Yeah. And as you know, he composed or co-composed most of the music for his films. Yes, and yeah. you've said his scores have become your home's house music. Yes. <laughs> and I yes. love that. What about that horror movie score is so oh. fitting for your day-to-day -day listening? Well, for the children, you know, having um, a partner who I'm raising children with who's a, a producer and very opinionated about music, it's like, where can we find music that the children find exciting, specifically our son, and, like, won't kill us inside? And um, John Carpenter is something that my son has loved um, since he was little. And it's, um, you know, it's just, like, has the, the amount of dr drama that the children um, are drawn to. It's terrifying sounding that, um, but it also in daily life, you know, like, we were very excited that the new Firestarter soundtrack came out. Uh, me and my son, who's six, and it was, like, a new John Carpenter, you know, record. And... Uh, you know, we'll probably never see the movie, um, and but just uh, it's like you know, if you're just driving around town and you've got like, you know, it's just like, it's just like it, I don't know, it's just it's a it's just like a light, um, it's a light in the darkness of of yeah, of, you know, just stuff you can share with your kid that they might be interested with too, and sometimes lyrics are a little too overwhelming um, for everyone in our house. Well, I love it. I have this image of pancakes and yeah. horror film soundtracks <laughs> yeah. Yeah. playing at your house. We did show him Thing, and we and uh, we forgot that it's actually like too terrifying, and that was um, we had to like have a, a cleansing brain moment, and we won't do that again. But in general, we just listen to the music. I wonder if he'll grow up to be a Carpenter fan. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure he will. He is now. Yeah. Well, the new Polisa album called Madness, it's absolutely wonderful, and it's wonderful always to see all of you. Thank you so much for making the time. Yeah, thanks for having us. And I want to thank our listeners as well for supporting KEXP. We are listener-powered. You can learn more about us at kexp.org if you'd like to donate. That's welcome, and it will support fantastic in-studio sessions like this, which you can discover on our YouTube channel. Subscribe and you'll get notification every time we launch a wonderful new video. Thank you again one more time. It's Polisa live on KEXP. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org. Damn, son, where'd you find this?